Jessica here again and <laughs> and yes I do have another word from the Lord and yes it was unexpected and yes it is a long one <laughs> which I mean um, you know it's just packed full of information because there's lots going on so I'm gonna pray I like open up in prayer and then um, I'll give you a little um, kind of synopsis of of what I was doing, what was going on before I received it, and then I'll read it and we'll go from there. We'll let um, Holy Spirit have his time um, for prayer after if, if uh, we feel led to do that. So I'm going to pray here. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made. We thank you, Lord, that we can come before you um, in your throne room and we just ask, Lord, and welcome your presence here tonight. Lord, I just thank you, um, Father, that you're good, that you love us, that you care for us, that you love this nation. And Lord, I just welcome your presence here, and I just pray and submit myself before the promptings of Holy Spirit. And I just ask with uh, pinpoint accuracy and precision that this word be delivered uh, the way you said it, the way you spoke it, the way you in intended it. I pray that you are exalted, your plans, your purposes, and ways are lifted up, and that um, and that I be brought low, as um, as John said. And uh, we just thank you and glorify your plans, Father. We thank you for what Lord Jesus has done. And Lord, I just also pray over this broadcast, over this video, and the channels that it's on. I just plead the blood of Jesus upon it. And we just thank you, Lord, that it's protected. We just uh, thank you that we have power over all the power of the enemy, and we send uh, five of your heavenly hosts to go before, to protect it, to pull down any strongholds, platforms, uh, confusion, any spirits that aim to steal kill, steal, kill, and destroy. We bind those in Jesus' name, and we just thank you that we remain under your protection and your guard, and that there's nothing to fear in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. Let me get a little comfy here. So, um, uh, right now, okay, so I received this word on Monday, August 8th. It was around 11.20, uh, 11.21 in the morning. And right now I'm recording this video on August 8th. <laughs> and it's like 10.01 p.m. here. Um, I was gonna do it a little later, but I just keep feeling like the spirits like no I want this out now quickly immediately so for whatever reason I was gonna record this send it out as quickly as possible um, Just so everybody knows with these videos if you look in the description box uh, below uh, There's also a link to the written and typed out uh, copy so I mean if you uh, feel like you've heard something or you missed something and you don't really want to go back and replay it You just want to read it um, Just go into the, the description box below and just click that link. It should take you right to uh, The page of the word. It's just on a blog site and then too we also have a uh, telegram <laughs> and Slack if you want to join those you get uh, fairly quick updates like right when the video is um, up uh, I usually notify people and let them know and then there's also kind of extra tidbits and prayers that we do on those channels as well So feel free to join that as well um, Anyways, yes, so this morning I was getting ready for the day and my uh, Family have they have a little chat group and it's the prayer and share chat group and on it, my uncle was basically uh, telling everybody and sharing the good news that um, he's having a shed raising party, um, which is basically just a little um, <laughs> kind of a spinoff of the old Amish barn raising parties they used to have like in the 19th century. Um, people from small communities, everybody would kind of lend a hand to help somebody build their barn and there would be food and and some of them would even have you know little parties and get togethers afterwards uh, once the barn was built so he's having a little shed thing because he's got his um, he lives in a rural area and he loves farming and he's kind of building up his own little hobby farm 
um, on his property. So right now he's got chickens. So he sells eggs and meat chickens. Um, but he's also getting a cow. Um, I didn't ask for any permission, but I just have to show this picture because it's just so cute. Uh, so he's getting a little, he got a little jersey. Um, so he's really excited about that. So we just um, pray blessings upon you and your farm, Uncle Scott. Anyways, he notified all of us that he's having a shed raising party. And it was weird because when he sent out that message, I don't even know how to describe it, but all, I just felt the spirit just kind of um, hone, hone me back in on that message. And it was kind of like, pay attention. And he said to me, he's like, that's a prophetic sign. And I'm like, he's building a little shed for his cow. What does that have to do with anything? But then the spirit was serious and it's like, no, that's a prophetic sign for this nation. And then next thing you know, I got whammed with just words and phrases and they're all, they all seem random. So I kept getting heavenly shed raising. I kept getting uh, like honeybees, the honeybees, watch out for those. Um, what else was he saying? And then there was um, a name Trudeau's name popped up, uh, and it just, um, constant, like, um, imagery of farming. These things kept popping up, and I was just, if I had to, it's like, okay, you have something to say, I'll sit down. So I sat down, and then he just puts a download in you, and it is so amazing, because I, I always question, it's like, how do these words and phrases, like, what is he going to do with these? Like, how is he going to make these flow together? But man, it's, I'm always amazed every time because just kind of like somebody knitting a quilt or, or, uh, <laughs> or making a patchwork quilt, um, he just is able to weave it and it's just this beautiful tapestry and it all makes sense. Um, I hope I explain myself <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so anyways, I'm going to read it to you guys. Just a disclaimer. I mean, if it doesn't sit well with you or your spirit, then don't receive it. Don't receive it at all. Um, you know, in first John, he talks about testing the spirits. I welcome that by all means do that. Use your discernment. Let Holy Spirit guide you. Um, you know, because I'm human, I make mistakes, I'm, <laughs> I'm not perfect, I'm fallible, and, um, and, you know, we each have the Holy Spirit in us, he can witness, he can explain things, he can show you, you know, that's, you know, what's, what is right, what's true, and what's not, so, um, yeah, just putting that out there, please do that, um, I'm not here to spoon, spoon feed you everything. I mean, I'm just here to share stuff with you guys, encourage and lift up. I mean, it's really up to you and the Lord to, for him to reveal things, for him to show you stuff, for that interpretation to be there. Um, so anyways, let me read this. This word is quite lengthy. Uh, is that, that is not where I want to go. This word is quite lengthy um, and it really breaks any kind of religious boxes, any kind of religious mindsets or imagery of who God is because I'm just going to give you a little heads up. Holy Spirit was just in his, I guess you could say, <laughs> he was in a very dramatic um, frame of mind. I mean, he just, he just went for it. I mean, there's cowboys in here. It's, it makes me kind of laugh and giggle because his sense of humor shows up. And it also kind of reminds me of Jesus when he would tell parables and how he would bring up kind of imagery and stuff that the people related to so they could understand stuff. Well, Holy Spirit's doing this with us today, just with a little different twist. Okay. I'm going to read it now. So this is titled A Heavenly Shed Raising. And once again, I got this Monday, August 8th, 2022, and it, it was around 1121 in the morning. So here we go. I am the Lord God over all the earth. I am he who makes his enemies a footstool. I am the one and only God. There is no God above me. There is no other. 
for I am a jealous God. There's that Elkanah. Um, I am a jealous God for you, O Canada. H how you have moved my heart how you have caused me to swoon and extend my hand towards you with love and affection. My heart's desire is to love you, to caress you, and to lift up, lift you up higher. My desire is to save and to wrap my arms around you as a husband comforts a wife. For the wife weeps, for she is barren, lost her kin and her way. For the Lord your God says to you this day, O Canada, I am wrapping my arms around you. I am whispering in your ear, you are worthy. I am pleased with you and I love you. You are the love of my heart, Canada. You hold a special place in my heart and I burn for you. I shall encircle myself around you. I shall lift you up. I have broken the yoke of your abusers. Canada, my love, there are those who have assaulted you, they have molested you and taken advantage of your innocence. They sought to degrade you and prostitute you out. They brought idols and other gods to distract you. They have tried with great might, power, and diligence to seduce you away from your first love, but it did not work. For you, O Canada, you remembered me. While they tried to pull you away and strip you, while they tried to dress you up as a harlot and lavish you with red lipstick and dark seducing eyeshadow, your heart cried out. It cried out against you. Then they tried to remove the wedding band. They tried to yank it off your finger, but you pulled back. You remembered me, my covenant, and the love I have for you. You called out to me. You cried out to me, Lord, Lord, save us. Lord, Lord, save us from these wicked men. Ha, ha, like the lone ranger I am has trekked across the desert, traversed mountains, and dove through rivers. I came, like in your cowboy movies, I knocked down the saloon doors and with guns a-blazing. For you, O Canada, are the apple of my eye. There is no evil, decrepit, or vile place I wouldn't go to save you. So I have come. I have come to save my bride. These evil, wicked men from a serpent's gang cover their faces with bandanas and handkerchiefs of blood. They scatter as shots go off. Some shall die behind the bar and drown themselves in liquor and oil. Others will fall behind the card tables. Their sleeves will empty as cards and stolen chips fall out. Oh, how I will shake, shake out their coat pockets. Oh, how I will force them to lay all their chips out. Some will try and run to the backstage. They will try to hide behind those women they victimized and they shall play the victim. They shall say, I was just following orders. I was just doing what I was told. Oh, but I know their hearts. I am the just judge. When the chaos breaks, a frenzy for power will begin, and they will shoot and scream aimlessly. Some will fire at each other, others will not have enough ammo and will have to turn tail and run, but there are those who would defiantly stand before me. They dare to challenge the God Sheriff, the fastest and quickest shot in all the land, for they think they can cheat their way out. They believe they can throw dust in my eyes and supplant a serpent in my boots. Oh, how childish. I will pick them up from their breeches. I will shake them until they are exposed for all to see. Many will stand on trial before the whole town square and others will not live to see daylight again. The great sheriff has come and I am lighting up your saloon in places of depravity. I'm saving the women and the children. I'm pulling you, O oh Canada, out of the dark places. I have come to save you and I am building a new life for you. The town will burn. The townsfolk will rant and rave, but there are those, the remnant, who will dance and sing about. They will sing praises and call on the spirit. They will do a rain dance and the rain of my spirit shall pour out. All the evil and corruption burnt to a crisp. Amen, and let it be so. The townsfolk will cry and lament, but then they will watch 
They will watch and see as my children, those who had praised, sung, and celebrated during the fire, begin to rebuild. They will watch as my children get to work. Watch, O oh Canada, watch as I have already prepared your new beginning. Watch as my children build and work as a body. I have gone before them. I have went out and leveled the land, cleared the rubble and the debris. Now is the time that they will dig. Now they will dig, 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 and continue digging deep beneath the surface. They will show and expose the rock. For there is a rock bed beneath you, Canada. It was established by your ancestors, and it shall be revealed again. Then they shall build walls, great walls of the kingdom. Four walls shall be built, and they signify east, west, north, and south of you, O Canada. My children, my children alone, shall tie and tether strong ropes, ropes that were woven from divine connections. They are ropes fashioned as a threefold cord. They shall coil around one another, but the ropes fibers the ropes, the rope fibers, are my people's prayers, their acts of faith, and the declarations that have gone out. These fibers have united together, creating threefold cords, my bride, my spirit, and me, O Canada. For my children are my bride, and my son is the loving bridegroom who has gone out into the wilderness and saved you. The children shall tie the ropes on the walls, they shall pull, bringing up each corner to its corner and each side to its side. I am the great craftsman and all will fit perfectly together. So celebrate my children. Celebrate for you are an integral. You are integral to the heavenly shed raising. We are raising up a heavenly kingdom in you, O Canada. We are joining you all together, Canada, for heaven's purposes. You shall be united. Your four corners shall be brought together, and my children shall raise it up on the rock. It shall not be shaken. A holy shed raising, a holy kingdom it shall be. The townspeople and religious preachers who stood and watched, many will jump for joy. But there are those who will turn up their noses. They will snort and snicker and say, We are expecting a palace. Where is the king's palace? This is but a barn? What good is a barn and a shed? I say to the religious hypocrites, Do not mock my heavenly kingdom. Do not hold yourselves in derision against my plans, for you will miss out. I have told you I am breaking your boxes. I am destroying your preconceived notions and eradicating religious pride. Who do you think you are, O preachers, O religious Pharisees? For you have turned my temple into a circus. You have made my holy places into a den of thieves. I am done with man's notion of church. I am stripping away every layer, notion, and thought of who you think I am and how I should act. You do not know me, and you never knew me, so how can you think you would recognize my kingdom? My ways are not your ways, so hold your tongue, religious man. I am doing away with all religious spirits. I am done with your church games, fundraisers, sheep counting, theatrics, and church corporations. I am done with it. You can sneer and scowl at the women who gave the woman who gave me a measly two copper mites, but I rejoice in her willing and obedient heart. Amen. For those who are willing of heart, those who have searched me out in the broom closets and gathered in the living rooms and on lawns, they drew me there as well. I was welcomed. I was their heart's cry, and in return I drew them close to me in my secret place. So, O Canada, heaven's private presence and the kingdom shall come in the form of a shed. <laughs> oh yes, a small barn. It will confound the wise, it will anger the religious, but it welcomes all. I have come to save your nation, and saving is what shall occur. The kingdom in Canada shall be rough and tumble. It will be humble and a haven for the hurting. Those who are wounded sheep, 
Those who are lost sheep shall come far and wide. My servants shall bring them in. We will clean and wash them. We will pull off the ticks and parasites. We shall bind up their brokenness and they shall rest. For I lead them to still waters. My rod and staff comfort them. I am the good shepherd. My servants shall even lead and call in the wild rams and goats. But once they are touched, once they have been touched by my goodness, they shall change to sheep, for they will know my voice, and they too will grow and feed until they have matured. I will send them out, and they shall become mighty lions, mighty roaring lions of God. Oh yes, these lions shall tread in the desolate places. They shall roam and cause any remaining jackals and hyenas to flee. With one roar, darkness shall flee. From around the world, the people will call on Canada's mighty lions. They will say, call on the nation of the maple leaf. Call on them, for they have walked in darkness but prevailed. Call on their God, for he has turned them over. The lions of Canada make hell tremble and the scream with terror. So I, the Lord your God, can say, Canada, Canada, do not cower back. Do not clamp up your mouths. Uh, do not clamp your mouths shut. Do not fall back with fear. The enemy is rearing up. He is riling up his minions for one last bastion of control but it shall backfire. It shall fall back on them because their ropes are weak and the fibers have come loose. They are unwinding on themselves and the cage they sought to erect shall try to be lifted off the ground, but the cords will snap and it will fall on them. Squish, splat, gone, a puff of dust shall rise up. Everyone shall hold their breath only when it settles shall they see nothing of the enemy's plans shall remain. Ha, ha, ha. I am the God who laughs at their schemes. Ha, ha, ha. I am the God of the circle and I am bringing everything to full circle. Amen. So be it. <clears throat> Yay, O Canada. I say to you, look for the bees. Watch and look for a strange occurrence of honeybees, for they shall build and erect their nest in a strange place. It will be a sign unto you. My kingdom is as the bees, gentle, mild, and always steadfast. They are productive and produce rich, healing honey. And watch, watch the flies, for they are parasites. They do nothing and are nothing. They feed off of others and defecate on everything and anything like the Lord of the Flies, which is a reference to Beelzebub. The flies shall rise up and destroy, but I shall move my hand and thwart their plans. I shall move and they will not be able to hatch and destroy the precious crops. No, no, they shall not. Amen. Watch, watch, O Canada, for in your news, yes, in your news, there are those who shall make slips of the tongue. Yes, watch as your officials and even your judges shall make slips of the tongue. Though they will try to cover it up, uh, it will only make it worse, for the host are already unwinding their thread of lies. Yes, I, the Lord God, am moving. I am moving upon the people. I am moving upon the people who are ignorant, brainwashed, and gullible. I am moving upon them, so do not fret. I have heard your prayers. O oh, Canada, do not worry. I am waking up those who have slumbered, those that have been mummified. I am removing the web of lies. I am opening up their coffins so the light comes in. Those who have locked themselves up in coffins, oh, they shall hear the lion's roars. Even if they cover their ears, it will still be heard. The bells of freedom shall ring out, the song of truth sung. There shall be no excuse. No, not one excuse shall stand before me. 
for I am the humble farmer. I am a god who farms. I strap on overalls. I too wear a straw hat and I enjoy planting and harvesting. For my eyes move to and fro across your land, O Canada. I look across the fields, scanning them for willing and obedient soil. But I am going before you and lighting up the field. Your fields, O Canada, they are filled with briars, burdocks, and weeds. They steal, steal, steal your nutrients, so I shall set you aflame and water you with my spirit. I will till this land and churn it up. I will churn you up and plant in you mighty seeds of my gifts. Oh, how you will grow a beautiful field of wheat. I am raising up the farmers for their time has come. I am turning up the dial. I am revving up the tractors. Things are about to get loud. Trudeau may say, cut the nitrogen by 30%, but I say to you, O oh Trudeau, I am cutting out the evil, corruption, and darkness 100%. There is no room for your stench and emissions. You and your cabinet of people, oh, how you reek of depravity. I am cutting you and your plans down 100%. I am declaring a net zero of darkness. Ha, ha, ha. Your boat is sinking, Trudeau. Many have already jumped ship. Just you wait. You thought one of your orange puppets was in your control. Oh, watch as I cut his strings and he shall turn on you. Oh yes, watch as he follows the money, the money you no longer have, the backing you no longer have. Push, push, push everything through. You're running out of time and you scurry around to push evil through. But the funnel, the funnel of evil that has worked with you, it has taken from many and funneled it through a narrow way. I'm placing my hand over that funnel. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm placing my hand over that funnel. Let us see what you will do, Trudeau. Where are your bribes? Where are your backers? Oh yes, they are having a meeting about you. They are doing an annual report about you. Should we keep him or, sh or scrap him? Yes, they sit in a circle, clouds of cigar smoke and filth wafting above them. They are discussing your usefulness and it doesn't look good. They are going to, they are doing away with you. You are too big of a collateral to take. Yes, the pressure is on you, not the Canadian people. Watch as you will soon see tantrums begin to manifest. Watch Canada because your leaders are feeling the pressure and they will break character. Watch as I move my hand and Trudeau like Pharaoh throws slips of the tongue and eventually tantrums, for he is a spoilt child and he is so unyielding that his arrogance will not allow him to admit defeat. He refuses to humble himself and so he has been given over to a reprobate mind. You will watch slowly Excuse me. As little by little, he loses his mind like that of Nebuchadnezzar. Watch and see. Pray, 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 my remnant, for the leaders that I have prepared. Pray a hedge of protection for those that have refused to be silent. Pray for Leslie Lewis, for there are plans to silence her. Yes, they wish to place a gag order on her. They want to tie her up in legal fees, and they want to mar her reputation with lies. Pray for her, and like Daniel, in the lion's den, I will shut the mouths of these evil scheming lions who seek to devour her. Lions of media, lions of so-called courts, and lions of politics. I say to you, I have called up leaders, I have called up kings and priests, I have called up helpers, advisors, prophets. I have called up the everyday citizen. I have called up the retired, the forgotten, and the elderly. I have called up the rustic and the little ones. I am appointing them with mantles of authority, badges of honor, and rings, um, rings of command. They will lead this nation riding on the winds of my spirit, sailing on uncharted waters, but I will carry them on waves of glory. Amen. Do not be disturbed, O Canada, neither be dismayed. I say, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, and I will take care of those who have bowed the knee 
to Baal, Marduk, Ishtar, and the devil. Do not hold on to it. Do not allow anger, resentment, bitterness to fester in your hearts. I say to you, forgive, let go, and I will heal your hearts. I will bring perfect justice. Do not fear. Amen and amen. Glory to God in the highest, for he comes down to save man. All honor be to him, all grace, mercy, joy be to him. For he is a just and righteous God, and he cares for his people. We sing to you, O Father. We sing to you, O Holy Spirit. And we sing to you, O Lord Jesus. Let our praises come before the gates of heaven. Let them ring through the streets of heaven and be before you a well and good smelling fragrance for you alone are worthy. You alone are deserving. You are the one true God on high. Amen. Whew. I'm already steamy. Whew. Okay. Whew. All right. Excuse me. Okay. So like I said, <laughs> there's a lot in there, and there was, I think, a few just little uh, side points. Uh, excuse me. Um, uh, yes, there's a, a few side points here I will cover. Um... So at the beginning of this word, the Lord talks about Canada um, and, and kind of that whole cowboy saloon situation. Now, when he was giving me that download, I had a perfect, I don't know what you want to call it, vision. Um, just, yeah, just total picture from him because I couldn't, I couldn't change what was, what the, the, the imagery that was going on in my head. It just kept um showing me this um saloon anyways you see um i kept seeing yeah it was this young woman it was canada and it was like this young kind of like a 16 year old girl that was just kind of pulled out of a um she came from humble circumstances which is canada she's a young nation and very innocent, very peaceful, very mild, but she got rolling with the wrong people and she got taken away by this gang of serpents. Um, for it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. And it's like the Lord said, it's like they brought idols, gods to distract you. They tried to prostitute you out. They were stripping you away and trying to kind of make you up to be something that you weren't. Kind of like those... Um, in the old days, those saloon girls, which were basically prostitutes at that time. Um, and it wasn't, and this is the imagery that, that still sticks to me, it wasn't until they tried to yank off that wedding ban, because this is the bride of Christ, until they tried to yank that off, that she pulled away, and she it's like she called out and said, Lord, save us. And man, did he ever... He could be miles away, <laughs> but he's so close to you that um, it doesn't matter what circumstance you're in. He will he will track deserts, traverse mountains, and dive through rivers to call, to come and get you. So it was a beautiful um, picture of how much he loves Canada. And I know, I know it sounds um, really out there because it's like, why is the Lord using cowboys? But honestly, um, we've we've at least seen one or two cowboy movies. I love spaghetti westerns. I watch them with my dad. I love the old ones. I love the cheesy lines. Um, but there's something to say about them and how you have the main lead, the hero, and how he comes into town, uh, takes out the bad guys, saves the ladies, saves the town, and that God is our hero. He is cool. He is amazing. Um, he doesn't need Hollywood to make him outstanding and amazing because he already is. And uh, and so it was just it's just a beautiful picture of that. And then the interesting thing was the picture of the saloon I got when the frenzy broke out, which it did. Like it was kind of like he came in, this great sheriff, he didn't even have to let off any shots because everybody just turned, tailed, and ran and started going crazy. Um, but he talked about they'll the the scat they'll scatter, 
shots will be going off. Um, some, some of them will shoot one another. Some of them will run out of ammo. Some of them will try and flee. Um, it was interesting how he said some will die behind the bar and drown themselves in liquor and oil. And I really got the sense um, that it was almost like a hopelessness, like these people, um, you know, it, it was just kind of a real, a real sadness, a real hopelessness, kind of like um, a Judas Iscariot. And they take, some of them will take their own lives. They'll just drown themselves in liquor or whatever. Um, the oil, uh, I really don't know how that mixes, but it was kind of like, uh, you wonder if it's like the, I don't know. Anyways, others will, be, uh, will fall behind the card tables. And it, I thought this was interesting because I saw, um, you know, your typical card decks, cards flying, cards falling out of their sleeves because they're cheating and stolen chips. Now, I saw poker chips, but when I read it again, I'm like, well, that could be, you know, technology. Like, um, I got a sense that there's more to that stolen chips because um, he would have said poker chips, but he just left it stolen chips. Um, but when the chips are down, man, he's going to shake them all out of their pockets. Uh, and then you have the individuals trying to run backstage and hide behind the women that they victimized, that they hurt. And they're going to try and say, well, we were just following orders, but they're, that's not, mm -mm, it's not going to fly. Um, so, yep, yeah, he's going to kick them out of town. Town's going to be set on fire, which really relates to the whole pine trees being set on fire. I mean, it's again that holy fire that's coming down just to burn up the depravity and the evil and this was really fascinating because this is when I saw when he talks about the remnant you could almost see um, it was kind of like these native spirit dancers they were all covered like your typical with the feathers and the, the tassels and the patterns and um, and they were calling on Holy Spirit they were doing a rain dance that was like I could I could see that um, which I thought was amazing. Um, and yeah, then you have the, his children, that shed raising. And there's something, because back in like the 19th century, they used to do in Amish communities, they still do it here in Canada, it's in our Mennonite communities, they'll do barn raisings, that's what they used to call them. And because they were small localized communities and it was a lot of money for people to just um, to pay workers to help them put up a barn, they would basically just do a barn raising where everybody in the community, even the women, would come together and they would help build this barn for this person. And it kind of turned into a potluck. Some people would bring food. People would just, it was kind of more of just like a fun work day, <laughs> I guess you could say. Anyways... I thought it was funny because he didn't say barn like a big, he said shed, like a shed raising. And I got the impression that it was, that it wasn't like, that it was kind of these small sheds. And it's, and it's, I just think it's interesting because I feel like, you know, we all have a little shed in our backyard. Well, not all of us, but most of us have a shed in our backyard. They're used for storing up. They're kind of like little storehouses. And I just feel like there's some kind of, there's more to that picture than just um, a little shed. Like, I feel like the kingdom of God, how we do church, how uh, it used to be in these big corporate buildings, which I'm sure we'll still maybe use in the future, but I feel like, man, it's just, he's turning everything on its head. And I honestly think the way we envision church and have done church and what we think a church is, the whole definition, he is changing that. And like he even says, I don't, and that's why he's kind of warned us against religious spirits because people are going to scoff at scoff at this and they're going to say, where's the king's palace? You know, we're used to giant old structures and monasteries with grand bell towers and stained glass. And I'm sure those will be around. I'm not saying that they don't have historical significance or anything, but as far as putting so much work and effort and this 
and the infighting that's happened over a building and who's upkeeping it and who's paying for it and how many congregants do we have to pay for this and they need to give because we need to pay for the new extension and and there's so much pressure to that and I just feel like the Lord's turning things over and he's he's really breaking that whole picture that we've lived for so long and it's it's gonna it's gonna look silly. I mean, it's kind of like this. The religious man says, "This is but a barn. What good is a barn in a shed?" And I think that's what God's saying is like, no more fuss about the buildings. Like they're gonna be non-fussy buildings, just little sheds. I mean, sheds you can pop up anywhere. Um, they're they're portable. You can put them in someone's yard. I think that's that's kind of what he's hammering at. There's something very significant and there's a reason why he didn't say barn like a barn raising it's it's a, it's a shed it's like these little you know i mean you can have a pretty big shed but it all depends on the size of your home and your backyard and i honestly think that's kind of that whole depiction of church how big your church is depends on how much space you have who you know and who just wants to come and just be there Right? I mean, it'll be on, it, we've already seen um, churches pop up in the strangest places. I mean, the other day, my mom and I were driving to Stratford, and there was a sign for a, um, a gospel church meeting on somebody's farm lawn. Like, there was chickens out on our front lawn, and you could tell that the sign was there, and it had the time that you could meet, and it was whoever wanted to come, and it's like, Okay, <laughs> so I really um, think that whole religious, how we do church, yeah, the Lord's turning that on its head. Um, and then uh, it talks about the sheep and the mighty lions, Canada's lions, that, oh, that gets me. The lions of Canada make hell tremble and scream with terror. Oh, that stirs you up. Now... Here it was. This is the one I wanted to elaborate on. The enemy is rearing up. He is riling up his minions for one last bastion of control. Now that word bastion has, uh, there's several meanings to it, but the Cambridge Dictionary uh, had kind of one of the best definitions. And it's this, something that keeps or defends a belief or a way of life that is disappearing or threatened. And I'll read that one more time. A bastion in the Cambridge Dictionary is something that keeps or defends a belief or a way of life that is disappearing or threatened. And the Lord says it right here, the enemy's riling up his minions for one last bastion, like their way of life, their way of doing evil, wickedness, manipulating people, it's ending, it's being threatened. They know their time's up here. And so they're trying for one last push for control, but it's gonna backfire. The other interesting thing about bastion is it used, it's actually a structure. So on, not so much medieval castles, this is later on, this is like 16th to the 18th century. They used to have, you'd have your, um, your wall surrounding your fort or your castle. And then you'd have bastions, which are juts, so they jut out of the wall. And they usually have kind of four sides to a point. And so they were actually kind of um, reprieve spots for um, people that were on those battlements, but on those bastions, uh, they were perfect uh, stations for um, for artillerymen, for snipers. That was the spots that they would take because it allowed them to shoot vast distances because it kind of jutted out, but they're, the way they were positioned, they were protected. And it wasn't just the straight wall, it was just how it jutted. So that's another definition. And you can kind of look at pictures, that's what that means. Um, and then this was interesting. So you have God's plan of the, <laughs> the shed, the heavenly shed raising, and how the enemy likes to copy that and manipulate it. And, and he, he was trying to erect a cage, but it's not coming through. It's just going to fall flat on its face and squish splat, like the Lord says. 
Um, and I think that was all that I kind of needed to elaborate. I mean, there's so much in this. Holy Spirit's humor shows through when he quotes Justin Trudeau cutting the nitrogen, but he's going to cut darkness out 100%. That's awesome. Um, yeah. All right. I think that's all I needed to. Okay. So I think now I'm just going to pray. Um, give Holy Spirit time to pray and do what he wants to and uh, and we'll go from there um, yeah let's just do it let's do it people you can join uh, with me if you want um, by all means we're just gonna let Holy Spirit have his have his time here mm. Heavenly Father we just thank you for your word we thank you that it's encouraging. We thank you that you, you so love us, that you, you traverse mountains, you dive through rivers, you, you will walk through deserts to find us because you love us. We are like, um, like that long lost woman, Father. We are like that woman that's been taken away and you've come back for us guns blazing. You are doing everything you possibly can to save us. Not because of what we're, um, not because of what we have, not because of what we can do for you, but because you love us just as we are. And Father God, I just want to pray over each and every person listening to this video each Canadian um, father we just want to pray and cover them with your love we just speak grace and the blessing and the favor of God I pray Lord and ask of you that you meet them that you meet them where they're at that they have an encounter with you that they go to bed tonight and they have dreams of you that they meet you face to face and so, Father, I just thank you, Lord, that you want to interact with your kids, that you want to, you want to reach out to them, you want to wrap your arms around them. And Lord, you're saying to your kids right now that they are worthy. They are worth saving. That you're pleased with them that you're not angry with them, that you love and care for them and you will do anything to save them. Lord, I pray for your people that, are, that have been hurting. They've been hurting financially. They've been hurting uh, job-wise and just the waiting. Oh, it's getting to them. It's got, it's, it gets to all of us, but man, have we waited. Lord, I pray that you lift up their spirits. I pray that you stir in them a new hope. Lord, we just give our unbelief and we trade it in for the faith of God. Lord, bring and stir up in us memories of how you've been good to us, how you've helped us, how you, how you have arrived just on the nick of time. Lord, you meet our needs. Yes, you do. Father, I just want to pray for those that, yeah, they're really financially hurting. And I think they're they're really concerned of, of meeting their next, um, their payments, their bills here. And... And the inflation, Lord, it's taken a toll on them and they've had to really cut back and they're kind of, they're getting really concerned here. Well, Father God, we just speak over those situations for there's many of them. We speak over those situations and we declare today that you are the children of God. You do not lack for anything. Father God, Daddy God is meeting all your needs. All you have to do is ask just ask, and he'll provide a way. He will make a way for you. He doesn't want you worrying. He doesn't want you stewing. He doesn't want you laying awake at night. He doesn't want you tossing and turning, 
what what can I take off my grocery list or how how can I save more and oh I wish we just had enough money I wish we could just get by this month no 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 we just rebuke any spirits of fear any poverty spirits any lack in Jesus name and we command those things to to they have to take their hands off you in Jesus name for you are the child of God you are under his kingdom we just speak favor and blessing upon you. We speak over your income that it increases here, that the hand of God reaches down and just uh, multiplies to you your needs. That if you need more laundry detergent, you are getting more laundry detergent. He is multiplying that to you. If you need more uh, chicken, and you need um, just more of the everyday essentials, he is multiplying those things to you in Jesus' name. You do not have to worry. Your gas in your car, Father, we just speak over all the ears listening here. We speak over their gas tanks, Lord. And we ask in the name of Jesus that you bless that, that gas, whether they filled up yesterday, whether they got to fill up tomorrow. Um, Lord, we just thank you, Father, that you multiply that gas for us, that we get our money's worth. We know we're paying way expensive prices, but Father, we just ask that you meet our needs in that realm, and we just thank you, Lord, that we are children of God, of the Most High God. You are our provider, and we thank you that we can call on you, and you answer. You do not disappoint. You will not let us down. In Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we just want to call in this heavenly shed raising. And Lord, we just, oh, we, we call it in. We welcome it, Lord. We submit ourselves to you and we, have, with willing and obedient hearts, Father God, we ask of you, use us. Put us in the places that you wish us to go. We know, Father, that things are rocking and rolling here. We, um, we welcome your holy fire and the spirit of healing that will come afterwards. But Father, when the dust settles, when all is said and done, Lord, we ask of you to use us, that you help us to, um, to bind uh, with that threefold cord, that we're in unity with your spirit, we're in unity with each other, and we're in unity with ourselves, that we're not condemned and guilt-ridden. Father, we just ask for um, new revelation, new understanding, a new download of what Jesus has purchased for us. Lord, I just pray that you stir that fresh within us, that you show us, Lord, what his blood paid for, what his blood covers, and how much he loves us, and how you showed your love to the world when you gave him up. Father, we just, yeah, we ask for that revelation. We ask for more of it in Jesus' name. And we just thank you, Lord, that we are raising up your heavenly, <laughs> raising up your, your heavenly sheds, Lord. We don't know what those look like. We don't know what that entirely means. But Father, we welcome it. We ask that you show us more. We ask that you renew our minds. And Father God, we cast off, if there's any kind of, remaining religious residue or spirits or ties or holy cows that need to be tipped over. Father God, we just ask of you and, and we invite Holy Spirit to reveal to us these things. We want to be free of any kind of religiosity. We want to be um, just have an open mindset that's just ready to soak in your plans and purposes your way of of uh, putting heaven here on earth. We want to be ready for that. We don't want to fight with you. We don't want to waste time wrangling with this new way of you doing things. We always want to be open um, to you and what you're doing. And we thank you for that. So we just, Lord, we open ourselves to you. We bear our hearts before you just as King David did. He poured himself out to you. Well, Father, we pour ourselves out to you. And we say, search our hearts, pull out anything that's not of you, any kind of religiosity, any kind of 
um, bring it to the forefront of our mind. Father, help us to remember if there's any unforgiveness or bitterness, Lord, we let it go. We let it go, Lord. We choose to forgive as an act of our will. By the power of Jesus Christ, we let these things go. If somebody said something hurtful, if we're holding on to something, um, we let it go. Lord, if we yearn for, uh, for that attention we used to get in church, we just let that go in Jesus' name. And we ask for your healing and cleansing spirit to move through us in Jesus' name. Just say, I receive you, Holy Spirit. Move and cleanse through me. We just want to be open to you, Father God, and we thank you for that. We thank you, oh, that you are moving, that you are shaking us up. We thank you, oh, that we're a body that's in unity, that we're working together, that you're connecting us in Jesus' name, that it's all you. Glory to you, Father. Oh, yes. Alright, I just wanted to pray and I'm all I keep getting is there's somebody never done this but there's somebody with leg pain somebody with kind of an excruciating leg pain it shoots down your leg and I feel like it's the right one yeah um, Lord we just um, we thank you father that you're um, that you're good that um, by this by the stripes of Jesus, we are made healed. And we just speak to any kind of sciatic pain, leg pain, um, excruciating, like it's nerve tingling, um, kind of like ants crawling on it. I've, I don't know. Um, but Father, we just speak and we reach out to that individual or individuals. And we touch that leg, we touch those nerves, tissues, sinews, and we say to it, be healed and, and made whole. We say to that leg, be restored in the name of Jesus and, and pain, we rebuke you in Jesus' name. You have to leave. Amen. Amen. And we just, we release that healing and the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, into that leg. And we just thank you that you were you're going to be walking all the days of your life pain-free, that it's going to get better and better, that that pain just leaves any spirits of infirmity have to go in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that you are the Lord, our healer, that you want us healthy and whole in Jesus' name, that that's so important to you. You don't want us in pain. Not at all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. Okay. I think that whew, is that. All right. Um, whew, okay. All right. Thank you guys for um, taking the time to listen and for tuning in and um, for joining in prayer session. Uh, we just like to let Holy Spirit lead that because I do think it's, oh, it's powerful. Anyways. Um, have a wonderful day <laughs> and a wonderful evening. Thank you for tuning in and God bless and have a wonderful week. I mean, I think things are rocking and a rolling here. Things are turning up the heat. Uh, so always be on the lookout, but you don't have to be afraid. God's got this. He's got this covered. He loves you. He is pleased with you. You are worthy. You're worthy to save. You're worthy of saving. And uh, he just wants his body to know that. He wants you to know that. That you are so beautifully and wonderfully made. And I don't care what situation you're in. I don't care what thoughts are uh, you're thinking or what's on you. Um, God's saying you're worthy. And, and he's pleased with you. And he thinks he thinks you're wonderful and you're amazing just as you are you don't have to change you don't have to clean up your act he loves you just as you are 
Amen. So have a wonderful day, guys, and bye. Thanks for listening.